story, the fantastically true story, of Herbert A. Philbrick, who for nine frightening years did lead three lives. Average citizen, high-level member of the Communist Party, and counter-spy for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. For obvious reasons, the names, dates, and places have been changed, but the story is based on fact. To achieve their purpose, ruthless communist leaders will sacrifice anything, even a loyal comrade. This week's story concerns one such sacrifice. Well, we're waiting, comrade. We're still waiting. I can stand this as long as you can, comrade. Maybe even a little longer. Well, Comrade Murray, are you about ready to tell us the truth? Who else is involved in this? Last night you received certain information. You immediately went out and called the authorities, turning that information over to them, didn't you? I'd say something if I were you, Comrade. This could be your last chance to do any talking. Comrade, uh, just what disservice has he done the party? None as yet, but the time to stop a traitor is before he can become a traitor. Yeah, yeah, there's no doubt about that. In Russia, they deal with these things realistically. Here we have a capitalist government which spawns traitors, offers them sanctuary and honor as a reward for their treason. Mm. Well, the information, if he's turned it over to the authorities, the don't you? The information was false. It was a trap, cleverly laid for him. And he fell into it. Take him out. We'll let the review board decide what to do with him. Comrade Murray is just one example. There are others. We have a constantly growing list of spies infiltrating our ranks. Infiltration was a technique developed by the People's Army, a method of bloodless victory. In the hands of the party, it spells deliverance. In the hands of the capitalists, it spells treason. That brings us to the reason for this meeting. There is an important job in store for us to be known as Project F-10. But before this project can be undertaken, the party has made plans to clear our ranks of traitors, spies, and informers, including amateur infiltrationists. Comrade. What is an amateur infiltrationist? A fanatic, like Comrade Murray in there. A creature whose misguided patriotism leads him to volunteer to spy on us. This type of spy is more dangerous than some of the others, and he and she must be hunted down and eliminated. In addition to Comrade Murray, he's talking about you, Philbrick, but he doesn't know it. Or does he? Comrade Charles. Yes. Your assignment directly concerns the elimination of the infiltrationists. We will discuss it after the others have gone. Yes, Comrade. I have here a list of 15 comrades who have been assigned to Project F-10. Five of these require additional checking. That is to be our present assignment. Of course, security measures require that the assignments be confidential. Comrade Hurd? Yes. You will contact Comrade Randolph Bishop. He's employed by the Eminon Chemical Company. First, check his standing with the company, and then carry out the following instructions with Randolph himself. Make every effort to get him to disclose the nature of Project F-10. Tell him confidentially, of course, there is to be a purge of disloyal party members. Send him right in, please. Mr. Burkett? Yes. Herb Philbrick of Associated Advertising. Happy to know you. Won't you sit down, Mr. Philbrick? Oh, thank you. What can we do for you? Well, a client of ours needs the services of a skilled chemist. The man can do the work in his spare time, but it's very important that we get exactly the right man. I see. The name of... Uh, Randolph Bishop has been mentioned to us. I believe he works here? That's right, he does. Well, as personnel manager, would you recommend him for the job? Oh, I would indeed. He's a mighty good man on his job. Uh-huh. On the job, but 
There are certain other considerations that we have to take into account. For instance, his family, his background, his personal habits, you know, the sort of thing. All right. Let's see. Yes, here we are. He's 36 years old and a college graduate. Since leaving school, he's had only two jobs with Highland Chemicals and with us. He has only one living relative, that's an uncle. Steady habits and survived the loyalty check with flying colors. Does that do it? Uh, yes, yes, it certainly does. Would you mind if I went back into the plant and had a chat with him? Oh, please do. You'll find him in the lab. Any of our people will be glad to direct you. Good. Well, thank you very much for your kindness. Not at all. I was glad to help. Bye. Bye-bye. So Comrade Randolph has a good reputation. Only two jobs since leaving college and survived the loyalty check with flying colors. How far undercover can you get? Oh, excuse me, I'm looking for a man named Randolph Bishop. I'm Randolph Bishop. Oh, I'm Herb Pilgrim. I'd like to talk to you for a minute, if I could. Sure, what about? Well, it's, uh, it's a kind of personal matter. Is there some place a little more private where we could talk? I'd invite you to join me at lunch, but I'd bring my own. I usually eat it in a quiet place. You want to come along and watch me? Lead the way. Yes. Uh, that's fine. Okay, Mr. Philbrick, what's on your mind? Well, there's an old saying, comrade. It never rains, but it pours. I'm listening. Project F-10 is about to get underway. So? Well, I've established a reasonable excuse to come here and see you. I'm going to be your contact on the project. That's okay with me. Have you made all necessary preparations? Yes. Have you got all the materials you need? Yes. Have you taken steps to ensure the success of the project? All possible steps. I'd like some details. The detail department is closed for the season. Good work, comrade. That's the way we like to see secrets guarded. Oh, just one other thing. You don't suppose any of your fellow workers here suspect your connection with the party? No. You're sure? Very sure. Why? Oh, nothing, nothing. Well, I'll see you in a day or two. Just a minute. What's this business about fellow workers suspecting me? What's on your mind? You want the truth? Why not? Well, it seems that there's some rather uncomplimentary reports on you filed at party headquarters. About me? It seems somebody feels that you're not to be trusted. Oh, they do, eh? Well, if the reports aren't true, I wouldn't worry about it. You and I know that the party investigators always get the truth eventually. They can investigate me until they're blue in the face. Glad to hear you say that, comrade. Because I heard there's going to be another old-fashioned party purge. Sometimes the boys that do the purging get a little rough. And those are his exact answers in his exact words, as far as I can remember. Well, I can't see anything wrong with that report. Can you? What is your reaction to Comrade Randolph? Well, I think he's sincere and earnest in his loyalty to the party. Part of your assignment was to find out the nature of Project F-10. Did you find out? No. No, if he knows, he's too cagey to tell me about it. He does know, and that's what worries me. Matter of fact, I don't know myself the nature of Project F-10. Well, what about it? Is Randolph in or out? He's out. Maybe I shouldn't say this, but I think you're making a mistake. I think Comrade Charles agrees with me. I sure do. I say he's out. And that's that. I have private information concerning Mr. Randolph Bishop. Well, then why'd you send me to see him? Every man is entitled to a chance. Do you think he's getting it? Maybe not. But it's far better to crucify Randolph than jeopardize the welfare of the party. He's out. Comrade Mitchell's decision might be very interesting to Special Agent Jerry Dressler of the FBI. Randolph is finished, huh? Herb, what's your opinion of Randolph? 
That's all right. I'd say a recent convert. He's going to have a rough time. His temper will get him into trouble, even if his political convictions don't. You think he's a loyal party member? Absolutely. Herb, the FBI will be vitally interested in the details of this Project F-10. I'll keep my eyes open, but so far I haven't been able to get my foot in the front door. And this purge of spies and infiltrationists, Herb, you know how they're going to handle it? I have an idea. From the smirk on Comrade Mitchell's face, I'd say that it's going to be highly unpleasant for the spies and infiltrationists. I hope I don't find out just how unpleasant. you're going. I'm going in the house. Oh, no, you're not. I told you this morning, if you came home dragging any of your rowdy friends, you wouldn't get in, and you won't. Mrs. Charles, this is my house, and I'd like to see anybody keep me out of it. Oh, you would, would you, Mr. Charles? Well, if that's what you'd like to see, that's just what you will see. Well, get out of my way, or wife or no wife, I'll knock out your teeth. You raise your hand to me, and I'll put you in jail for the rest of your life. Shut up. Somebody will call the police. I'm sick of you and the trash you drag into this house. I'm sick of it, I say. Shut your mouth or I'll shut it for no you. Don't dare touch it. But so you're cooking my friends out of my house. You're a bottle. 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 She also named five other persons who she said were plotting to overthrow the government by force. Frederick Tyler, Allison Kirkwood, Angela Dunning, a man known only as Red, and Randolph Bishop. Well, Herb, there's your new method of getting rid of undesirable party members. I don't get it. A couple of communists like Mr. and Mrs. Charles who have nothing to lose go through with this phony confession to discredit disloyal party members. Yeah, but couldn't they just go to the police or the FBI instead of going through all this rigmarole and getting themselves arrested? No, in that way, the five names wouldn't get the publicity. And it's the publicity they need. I still don't get it. Well, let me put it this way, Herb. If you were accused publicly of being a communist and you couldn't deny it, what would happen? I'd lose my job. My wife and kids would be outcasts. I'd probably have to pack up and move to another city. And you would lose your usefulness to the party and to the FBI. Right. Well, multiply that situation by five, and you have a bloodless purge of five disloyal party members. Now, there's just one thing. What's that? In a scheme as general as this, the loyal party members generally get as hurt as the counter spies. Yeah. You mean Randolph Bishop? That's right. He looked all right to me, but how can we be sure that he is loyal to the Communist Party? Well, let me say this, Herb. We know that he isn't disloyal. Now, to get back to this Project F-10, I have an idea. Good. This list of comrades who are connected with this project, if we could get that list, their names might give us a clue as to the nature of the job. Yeah, but Comrade Mitchell is guarding that list with his life. I know. But if you do happen to see the list of the other ten names, let us know. The other ten? There were fifteen? Oh, yes. But the party very kindly had five of the fifteen published in the paper. All we need is the other ten. All right, we're having a meeting this afternoon. I'll, I'll see what I can find out. Thank you. Randolph, are you a communist? Let me put it this way. Would it make any difference if I were? Look, I don't want any more beating around the bush. Are you or are you not a member of the Communist Party? Mr. Burkett, I never saw that woman and she never saw me. Are you going to believe the raving of some fanatic female? No, but I'm going to believe you. Now, no more stalling. Is it yes or is it no? Let me ask you just one question. That's all. As far as I'm concerned, you're convicted by your own evasion. If you weren't mixed up in this thing, you'd come right out and say so. That's a typically unfair attitude. Be off the company property as fast as you can. We'll mail your check. I'm sorry about this, Randolph. I like you.
thanks to splendid work by Mr. and Mrs. Charles, this project list has been cleared of five possible traitors. The five accused comrades are no longer of any value to the party. Therefore, they are no longer of any value to anyone. But there is one thing we may have overlooked. What's that, comrade? The possibility that some disgruntled comrade who knew of Project F-10 going to the authorities and giving them the information. There it is, Philbrick. That's the list you've got to get hold of. But how? Well, comrade, wouldn't such people be discredited? Would the police believe them? Perhaps not. But I have orders to postpone Project F-10. Therefore, this meeting is at an end. Please leave one at a time, as usual. Cigarette. Sure, I don't know. You check in as usual. I have a little work I'd like to do. Would you mind if I used your desk? Why not? How long will it be before Comrade Mitchell discovers it's missing and comes back looking for it? Henry Chalmers. Henry Chalmers. Teresa Robbins. Henry Chalmers, Teresa Robbins. Francis Layton, Francis Layton. What are you doing here? Just thought I'd drop in, say hello. On my way to police headquarters. Uh, police headquarters? Yes. You must have heard of the place. It's where they take people who've been arrested for things like starting fires. Well, suppose we step back to my office and we'll talk about this thing. Seems like there's been some misunderstanding somewhere. Well, that's right. There has been a misunderstanding. Yesterday I was Randolph Bishop the Chemist, a man with a good job. Today I'm Randolph Bishop the Communist, an outcast. I'm sure we can do something about that. Come on, let's step into the office and we'll talk about it. Frederick Tyler, Frederick Tyler. Allison Kirkwood, Frederick Tyler, Allison Kirkwood. You'll look well in prison stripes, comrade. I hope they put us in the same cell. We'd get along so well together. You're talking nonsense, comrade. We can straighten all this out in a couple of minutes. Allison Kirkwood, Angela Dunning. Allison Kirkwood, Angela Dunning. a traitor, didn't I? A traitor? Now he's trying to prove it. Threatens to go to the police. Randolph, I went out on a limb to, to try and mark you down as an honest communist. Was I wrong? No, you weren't wrong. He was. What do you mean? Just because some crazy, jealous woman has a quarrel with her husband and puts that you on... That crazy, name? jealous woman never heard of me. She put my name on that list because you gave it to her. Got me fired. So you know what I'm going to do? What? I'm going to bust Project F-10 wide open. Oh, don't think I'll go back on my word. I'll start my fire. You'll obey your orders and keep your mouth shut, or we'll shut it for you. It's too late, comrade. Because when they ask me about the fire at Eminent Chemicals, I'm going to tell them you paid me to do it. You're out of the party. You're no longer any good to us. You'll never start that fire now. Wrong tense, comrade. The fire has already started. Or at least it should, in about ten minutes. What do you mean? I set up a phosphorus bomb in the closet of my lab. The phosphorus is covered with water. When the water drains off and air hits the phosphorus, it'll break into flame and there'll be a lovely fire. They'll blame it on me individually and the Communist Party in general. And you can bet your life those other nine fires will never come off. Nine fires? That's right. There were supposed to be ten fires set at once to cripple chemical plants involved in government work. in the lab. I've got to stop the fire. Well, what about Randolph? Oh, keep an eye on him. Ten minutes, he said. Mitchell won't make it unless the timing is off. What's the matter? Never mind. Come on with me. Yes, 
Never, Philbrick. But be careful. Randolph may not be unconscious. Never trust a comrade, loyal or disloyal. Look, I may be a little late for dinner tonight. Well, there's an emergency meeting here. Uh, yeah, here at the office. Yeah, I'm with Randolph Bishop. Do you remember the fellow I told you about this morning? Yes, that's right, the one with the Eminon Chemical Company. All right. See you. Emergency. Randolph. Eminon. An emergency at the Eminon Chemical Company. And also a standby to pick up Randolph Bishop at the Communist Party headquarters. I'll be right there. sure that there won't be any more party bonfires now or later. Yeah. I wonder how I stand with the party at the moment. Oh, you should be in perfect shape. The police catching up with Mitchell and Charles here, that puts the blame on Randolph. Yes, but I was supposed to be watching Randolph. Well, when you heard the police were coming, you, you say you went out the back way. Good idea. You know something, Jerry? What? I did go out the back way. It's a very wise thing to do, Herb, under the circumstances. Project F-10 comrades in the hands of the FBI, the arson plot came to a rapid and dismal end. Next week, another story from the files of a man who spent nine fantastic years as a counter-spy for the Federal Bureau of Investigation.